Today, I'll be showing you how to begin automating away your tasks with the power of AI. Just like so, I'll be creating a super basic three-step automation where we use the power of ChatGPT to complete some of your work. The example I'll be using here is a simple email subject line generation, but by following these steps, I'm confident you'll be able to create hundreds of others. So let's get into it. Step one, we'll be heading over to zapier.com, a no-code automation tool that makes this super user-friendly. You're going to need an account here, so just click sign up, and I personally use Google to log in. Here I am inside of my account. The main thing you need to know is that every single automation task is calculated as one zap. So as you can see right here, I used up 399 zaps this month. So the first few weeks are free and then you need to pay for this. But what you're paying for is quite powerful because if I go up here and click create zap, I'm creating a brand new automation that is going to run 24 seven and complete everything that triggers it. And that brings me to the first point. You need to understand the concept of a trigger. Think of it as a row of dominoes and the trigger is the very first one. It's what sets the whole thing in motion. So in our case, we'll pick one of my favorite and most universal triggers. We're going to set it up so that every time I drag and drop a new file into a folder on my computer, it's going to start the automation. In my case, we'll do that with Dropbox because that's what I use, but you could use Google Drive or any other of the 5,000 plus apps that trigger Zapier. Okay, so as I have the Dropbox app installed, I have all these folders locally. And what I'll do is I'll just go into my auto hub AI advantage here. This is where I manage some of my automations. So in here, I'll just say new folder and I'll just say YouTube test. And very simple in here, I'll create two folders, one which I'll call drop zone emails. And I called it that because that's where we're going to be dropping the emails into. And the second one is called subject lines. And that's where I want AI to generate some subject lines based on the emails I put here. Okay, so that's the plan and the theory, but now let's turn this into reality. So as mentioned, first we need the trigger to let the software know, hey, it's time to start the automation. And the event that will be making that happen is first of all, Dropbox right here. And here's my first beginner tip. You always just go top to bottom. So right here, you see Dropbox that we just selected. That's perfect. Next up, we need to pick the event that is going to be triggering this. And conveniently so, I'll just say new file in folder. So when a new file in a folder appears, this automation starts. Say continue, and we need to choose an account. Now I linked it multiple times, but this is the account that I use. I'll click continue. Okay, and again, top to bottom, we're just gonna pick what's necessary. So first of all, this is my team space, not in my personal one. So this is just something I know. And when I head to folder, I just need to navigate to the correct folder, which is in the auto hub AI advantage. And then inside of there, we can already see the YouTube test, perfect. And in here, remember, this is the trigger that starts the automation. So I want the trigger to start when a new file in the Dropbox folder appears. And the folder that I wanna use to trigger this automation is the drop zone emails, right? So that's essentially it. I can just click continue. And now we could move on to setting up our actions, but I always like to test my automations. So what I'm gonna do for that, I'm just gonna take one of these random AI generated emails in a text file, and I'm just gonna put this inside of the drop zone. So now we can actually test it, right? Okay, so I'm gonna press test trigger and it should find this brand new file. No file found, let's try again, give it a bit of time. Amazing, there you go. Look at that, free services automail.txt, free services automail.txt, it found it. So now as you can see, Zapier here picks up everything inside of that file. Here's the entire content. Content, right? So now we can keep going and use this. Let's just say continue with selected records. And here we get into the interesting part. So now that we set up the trigger, this is the second and last part you need to understand. It's actions. Once you trigger an automation, you can make as many actions as you desire happen. In this case, we're going to be adding two. One is going to be using ChatGPT and the second one is going to be saving the results. Okay, so let's start with ChatGPT. Very simple. I just type in ChatGPT here. There you go. And as per usual, we have to pick an event. So right here, I just click event and here you just just want to use conversation. This is a basic conversation with ChatGPT. Click continue, pick my OpenAI account. That's perfect. And right here, there's a few fields, but I want you to ignore most of them. What matters here is, first of all, the user message, which is the prompt that you will be sending to ChatGPT. And also down here, the model matters, right? So if you click model, we can change this. We're going to head on over to model and I'm going to be using GPT-4 for this, like so. Everything else will leave as it is. All we need to do is write out a prompt. So I'll just head on over to my free ebook that comes with signing up to my newsletter and I'll just click this one, explore email subjects. So you could just take one of these presets, but I'm gonna customize this to my own needs by starting with the formula because I want this to solve my very specific problems, right? So I'll just post the formula in here and as per usual, we'll just replace these words in brackets. So I'll just say generate five email subject lines, YouTube video, 
announcement to AI enthusiasts. And actually, I'll just remove the last part. So again, you could literally use any prompt here. On this YouTube channel alone, you'll find hundreds of examples of useful ones. And here's the best part. If I'm doing this automatically, I can actually use the email from the previous step inside of my prompt super easily. All I'll do here is go into a new line and say email colon. And then by scrolling down, you'll see that from step one. I actually get to reuse the text right here. File text. And as you can see, this is the content of the text file that we dropped in there as an example. So simply, I'll click this. And now it's going to run this prompt with GPT-4 and then also insert the email from the previous step. So it's going to generate five email subject lines and it's going to include the email that this is for. And that's really it right here. All I need to do is click continue. We can quickly test the action. And what this should do now is generate five subject lines. As you can see, this is our prompt right here on the user message. And as a expected. We have the entire email in here and it's already done. So let's scroll down and have a look at what it did. Yep. Here's the content, five subject lines. So this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for, but we're missing one last step. I want to save this to a file. And now you could take a lot of routes here. You could save this to Excel sheet. You could send this out via email. I'm just going to go with the simple step of saving it to a different folder inside of the Dropbox. So I'm going to add another action by clicking plus, pick Dropbox as the app, choose an event, and I'm going to say create text file. Super simple. Continue. Yep, this is the correct account. Continue again. And as before, I just need to fill out where I want to put this. So remember, we created the second folder called subject line. So this is exactly where I want it. So I'm just going to navigate there. This is in my team space, in the automation hub, inside of YouTube test, and then the subject lines folder. Perfect. So now it asks me for two more things. First of all, what's the file name? And secondly, what's the file content going to be? So file name, super simple. Again, I'll just borrow a part of step one. I'll use the original file name, and then I'll say underscore auto subject. And this way I'll know this is an automatically generated file. And then the very last step is the file content. And what is the content of this file? Well, it's the result of the chat GPT step, right? And that's why I need to go to my second step. And here, this might be a little less obvious. You just need to scroll down a little bit. You always want the assistant response message this one right here. Always on the right and non-bold characters. You can see the example of what that would include because we tested our steps. And by clicking more, it just becomes obvious. These are the five subject lines. Perfect. I'll just click this and that is it. I'll just click continue. I can test the action and now a new file should appear inside of the folder. That's it. It works. And that is it. I just press publish and now I have this automation running 24-7. I only use up zaps whenever this gets activated. And right here, the final test, I'll just drag and drop this file into the folder. And as my automation is running within two minutes, it will scan the folder and automatically run the two actions of using ChatGPT and saving the output to the new folder. There it is. Did you see that? And now you can go ahead and customize this. You can choose from thousands of apps with tens of thousands of triggers and all kinds of action. But now you know how to use the power of ChatGPT automatically. And everything that we discussed on this channel just became so much more powerful because after this one time setup, you can make it work for you forever. Okay. And if you want to learn more about automations, check out the first link in the description below. And if you want a video that shows you what else you could automate with this technique, check out this one right here. I'll see you there.